So let's create one more method in our event context class. And again, it's going to be protected for the override. And again, nothing is returned from here and it's called on model creating. And this is going to be our seeding method. And in order to seed a database with initial data, I'm going to pass in the model builder because we want to grab the data from the model and assign some values to it. So you wanna assign value to the comedy event for the name, the ID, the date, the same for the comedian, the same for the entity of a venue, as well as the gig. And we'll do it using the model builder class. And I'll just call it builder. So how do we use that? Well, we'll go to builder class dot, and you have a bunch of properties and methods that you can use. And the one we want is the entity. And that returns an object that can be used to configure a given entity type in the model, because that's what we want. We want, we want the entities in our model, which is the event, comedian, gig, and venue, to have a data. So we'll use the entity and we'll assign data to each of them. So the first one is going to be the event and we don't want it blank, we want the data in it. So we'll do dot and then has data. And it configures the entity to have seed data. And that's what we're doing in this method. So let's now create a few data. So we'll create a new object and assign some data to our properties. So the event ID property Let's say the first one will be one. Then we have event name. So this one can be, I don't know, funny comedy night. We have event date property. So I'm going to create a new date time property. And let's say for 2019, and it can be May 19, for example. And we have to assign the event to a venue as well. And we don't have the venue yet, we'll do it next. But we'll assign it, let's say, to venue with ID that equals one. So the venue ID, of course, comes when we go to event, is the property for the venue. So we assign the event to this venue. Now, there is also, of course, the collection of gigs, but this is not a table. So we do not have to populate it in our builder over here, just the venue ID. So this is our first entity that we populated with data. Now let's create the next one. So I'll go to builder.entity. And this time I want the venue to be populated. And when we go to venue, you can see that it only has regular properties. There are no relationship properties in it. So it simply want to populate the ID, the name, street, city, state, zip code, seating, and serves alcohol. So just like we did over here, we want to add data. So we'll use has data. And we'll create a new entity and populate the data. So of course, the first one is the venue ID. And this is going to be ID one for the venue. And then we have all the other properties. So we have the venue name, the street, the city, the state, the zip code, the seating. Now the seating is an integer, so it's not in quotes. And we have the serves alcohol, which I set to true. So this is a venue ID one, which also belongs to this event as well. So next let's build the entity for the gig. So let's create another builder that entity for the gig. And once again, it has data. So we will create a new gig. So let's have a look at gig. And you can see that we have our gig ID headline and the length, but we also have the event as well as the comedian that this gig is being performed by. So we need to pass in the IDs for the event and comedian when we are creating the relationship and see it in the database. So over here, first let's create a gig ID. 
and it's going to be the first gig, so gig ID 1. The next one is the venue ID that the gig is going to be on. So it's going to be venue ID and we only have one, so venue ID with one. And of course the comedian ID, which we don't have the comedian yet, that's gonna be the last one we create. So let's assign this gig to comedian ID one. And now we have the actual properties for the gig, which is the gig headline. And let's say this is going to be my gig, so it's going to be Pavel's funny show, because I am very funny. So next is the gig length and minutes. That's how we name the property, I believe. Let's have a look. Gig length in minutes. So let me just copy that and paste it here. And I spent an hour of being funny. So that's our first gig, but let's actually see the database with one more gig. So instead of just having one gig, we'll have two. So over here, I'm going to add another. So I'll put a comma there and we'll create another new gig. And here we will create another gig for a different comedian. So I'll copy this. And this is going to be gig ID 2 and it's going to be for venue ID 1 so it's going to be the same venue they will have two gigs and the comedian ID will be 2 and the headline can be lifetime of fun and let's say the length will be 45 minutes since I am the headliner I'll have 60 minutes and this guy will have only 45 so we have two gigs created. And now let's create comedians. And since we have two gigs, I want also two comedians. So let's go to builder.entity for comedian, which will have data. So the first comedian is going to be comedian ID equals one. And let's actually have a look at the comedian, what we need. And it's just the properties for the first name, last name and contact phone. So let's do the first name. And she's going to be me. So it's Pavel, last name, Almashi. And we have the contact phone. And my contact phone, if you want to ever call me, is 111-222-3333. And it is a fake phone number, so don't try to call me. And let's create another comedian. So it's going to be another new comedian. And I'll copy this, paste it here. So this one will be comedian with ID 2. And let's say it's going to be Robin Williams. And his phone number can be 444-555-6666. All right, so this is our seeding data. And we are ready to start creating the database and populate it with this data. But before we do, I actually just noticed I made a little mistake here. For the gig entity, we don't have the venue ID. If you go to gig you can see we have the event because the gig is of course tied to an event not necessarily a venue in fact when we go to event you can see that event has the venue in it so what we have to do here is change this from venue id to event id and the same for our other gig as well so it's gonna be event id we only have one event, so they both belong to the event ID one. All right, so that was easy fix. And now we are ready to create the database and seed it.